It feels like forever that I've been waiting to tell you about this one. Whee! Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier. Months ago, I was very lucky to have been sent an early working prototype of the proposed changes to the MT50 CM2 throttle from Verpal. On the 4th of December 2020, Verpal officially announced the MT50 CM3 throttle. I was sent the prototype to offer feedback and suggestions specific to the new parts including fit, finish, function, construction, and implementation. This was done in secret, however, now that the release is official, I would like to take you through the product, so welcome to my review and overview of the MT50 CM3 throttle from Verpal. The update focuses mainly on two things. The first is the addition of a modular detent system, and the second is a taller throttle arm resulting in a longer throw and some better fidelity. Both were requested heavily by the community since the CM2 was released. Verpal names their products by generation, so CM is the first generation, CM2 is the second, and now CM3 is the third. This is the first product they've branded CM3. The CM3 borrows heavily from CM2 and panel number one, which I have both reviewed in the past. Lately, their build quality, choice of materials used, the components selected, and the circuitry layout have grown up a lot. Because the community is widely varied, they knew that their solution could not simply be one size fits all. The solution needed to be modular, and I actually believe their implementation has something for everyone. Today I'm focusing mainly on the changes, but if you want a detailed look, the original reviews are linked up for you right now. The CM3 is practically identical to the CM2. The metal frame is solid, with a nice mass that helps the removable rubber feet keep things in place. Those feet can be removed in seconds, allowing to be cleanly attached to a wide range of sim pits or mounting solutions. The metal housing is 4mm thick, solid steel with chamfered edges, clean text atop a semi-gloss powder coating. The throttle grip itself is polymer, thick and chunky, with many digital buttons and analog encoders. No sharp edges, everything is within easy reach for most, and a nice diamond pattern on the grip. They carry over the current removable USB and auxiliary ports to the CM3. This allows for solo or daisy-chained operation, providing a clean install. They also carried over the 3mm gap between the split grip to ensure that they would never collide. What is updated is the detent system and the extended throttle arms. A reminder that my unit is an early prototype, so parts on mine may not exactly be the same as the full production version. The housing around the throttle was modified to accept two detents, which are held in place externally with Allen bolts. The threaded parts are metal, ensuring they'll never strip and can hold the detents solid exactly where you place them. This modular implementation is actually super slick because you're free to mix and match the included parts, achieving their goal of true customization. Both axes has its own lever, which lifts the cam bearing, allowing for paired or split operation. The bearing rides friction-free, the lever is spring-loaded giving a satisfying mechanical feel with a tactile feedback. No binding even after two months of use, and because it's external, maintenance is easy with a Q-tip or even a compressed air duster. The lever that touches your finger can pivot to provide comfort to the end user. Included are five sets of detents. The classic detent has a stop for afterburner and for idle. You need to lift up on the lever to move into afterburner or into engine shutoff but to return, you do not need to use the lever. Classic Detent Plus is the second one and is similar but has small grooves which will let you feel a tactile bump as you come close to the lockouts. These indicate to you through a positive tactile return in the grip when you're about to cross back out of afterburner or out of cutoff. These four can be mixed and matched, but the reality is all of them can be mixed and matched, giving you extreme granularity in how your throttle behaves. The next pair is what's called the Warthog set, where you need to lift to get in or out of afterburner or in or out of cutoff. I found that extra lockout could lead to more frequent fumbling when making rapid changes, but I quickly got accustomed to the new levers and mistakes became less frequent. The lockout does exactly what it's designed to and operates smoothly. The next two are tactile and require no lifting of levers. These are meant to operate quickly and provide the user with a bump that's easy to feel. The acrobatic set are referenced to provide a feedback between 10 and 20% and at 75 to 85%. Again, these options can be mixed, plus you can choose to use only one. And the last option is a single detent called Cosmosim for Space Sim pilots. A game like Star Citizen has a throttle which includes SCM. Space Combat Maneuvering Limit is the speed at which the ship becomes less acrobatic. Staying below that speed maximizes the acrobatic performance of the ship, improved locking time and gimbal tracking performance. In testing, we know that each ship has a slightly different SCM limit. Because this can be quickly adjusted by releasing the screws, repositioning the bump, and then locking the adjustment down, you could actually move your SCM bump as you change ships. 
I never found the lack of a detent to be super critical on the CM2. Star Citizen does have a visual indicator that you can clearly see on your HUD. After having it though, and testing it, I noticed that I stopped looking for it on the indicator because I could feel it in my hand. I could then focus on where I was going or what I was doing, and I believe now that I've used it, I would actually miss not having it. For DCS and other flight sims though, the afterburner staging for multi-engine planes plus a cutoff is a lot more important and it's truly a welcomed addition. The CM3 throttle then gives the user something that most don't have, and this could likely be the most tunable set of detents anywhere in the business. I'm going to end on what I know to be the frustrating part of evolution, and that is obviously those who have invested in a CM2 already. The question there would be, do I upgrade or not, and that is truly personal and completely up to you. For Star Citizen, I don't think I would upgrade if I had a CM2, but for DCS, I think this feature is much more important and desirable. I'm going to end the video there because the channel is known for brevity. If you're interested in a rundown of the bindings and other features, I'm going to ask you to refer to the CM2 review and I would also like to suggest that you see the recent review on panel number one. As information such as availability, special offers and announcements are made from Verpal, the best way to see them first is to follow Verpal and myself on Twitter. Links for everything are in the description and that's it. Thanks to Verpal for providing me an early opportunity to look at their newest product and offer feedback. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.